Here is an early mid-century twin-sized waterfall bed that I got online for $20. It's in relatively good condition with some damage as you can see on the footboard and including damaged veneer. I believe it is maple with some very pretty maple burl accents. I'm going to restore it with a little extra since I'm keeping this from my home. I think it's pretty minor repairs. A little piece of veneer here, uh, but not too jagged. Now I'll, I'll clean it up. It has some pretty markings on it. A little, some scratches. Maybe I can iron them out. All pretty minor repairs. There was some structural damage. So, off camera, I mixed up the last of my quick wood and filled in some spots. I glued this crack yesterday and um, I brought it in. It was a sh like a shard of wood sticking out and some of the wood was missing. So, first I glued it overnight and then I added some quick wood um, and epoxy putty. And then I just made some little minor adjustments with some cracks little cracks instead of using a wood putty regular wood putty i use the um, epoxy two-part i glued this yesterday yeah mm. i kind of should use some wood uh some quick wood there but i don't have any left so i'm going to put some putty on it but at least it brought it in a little bit it's kind of a resistant little crack. Actually, it seems like it, it seems like it moves a little bit. So I'm going to try putting a little more glue on it and reclamping it and see if I can get that a little bit closer. Let's try it without that block. Let's see if I can. And so I want to replace this little piece of veneer and it kindly broke off a little square piece. So that's a good thing. Um, so I look through the pieces that I have, and I have some maple, um, but the grain doesn't look right for this particular piece right here. But I do have some Douglas fir, and I like the way the grain matches there. I could even maybe use this side. Um, if this is a very, very calm looking piece, so I'm thinking I'll probably go over here. The color of this Douglas fir isn't too far off um, from the base color of this maple. So what I think I'm, you know, I'll be able to um, do a pretty good color match in the end once I put my color on. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Thank <laughs> you. 
within all that. But now I'd like to show you a uh, post on Truth Social from President Donald Trump. Why is it that Republicans are always fighting amongst themselves? Mm. Why aren't they fighting the radical left <sighs> who are destroying our country? Um, Donald Trump. business guy and you would give a business talks and now it's like you're talking to presidential candidates and all the people I'm talking to I was a comedian like the idea of fame was like built into the I never was doing it to be maybe subconsciously I was I wasn't consciously doing it that way but like fame was going to be an extension of what I did you go into insurance you're not going I'm going to be famous one yeah yeah no listen to be famous in insurance it means nothing <laughs> it means you need something really illegal <laughs> for you to be wow Insurance agent let's take all these clamps off and see what we have. Ouch. I always get bruises from these things. It's terrible. Not bad. I had to fill in a little bit in the cracks. This side came out good. Yeah. Just fine.
They will polish most of the grass-laid hardware and all apply air coat of lacquer for grass. I'll finish this dresser by applying several coats of black water based on the urban. In my opinion, this flat finish looks better on the but for this dresser, I think a satin finish would have looked much better. Looks have been written about the hundreds of options possible for refinishing furniture. Moving forward, I think my preference will be to use the least amount of artificial finishes possible in order to showcase the natural beauty in the living. So this hard nightmare turned out the way I hoped. Far from it, I'm grateful to learn from this project. And who knows, maybe the new owner will take this piece once again. Thanks for joining me. Goodbye for now. So, um, I have sanded it uh, with 80 grit sandpaper. Actually, first I stripped it, right? Yesterday, we did some um, stripping. And it looked, right away, it looked like it was going to come out really nice. Um, but the wood, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's pine. Because it's rather soft and it has a lot of knots in it. And it, it looks like there's some, like, sappy spots all through the grain. Um, so, you know, I dug out the um, grooves here, the details, pretty well. Um, I think I'm going to go over it a little bit more in a couple of different places and sand it, just to see if I can't get some of that stain out. I can't feel it, but I can see it. Um, so I'm going to do that. I wiped it down a little bit just to take some of the dust off and vacuumed it off. And I'm after I do this detail just a little bit more I'm going to spray it with a little shellac and just see what it looks like um, it feels pretty good um, I'm thinking that's probably why they had um, such a deep thick stain on it is they just take some you know inexpensive wood and they just kind of uh, put like a thick goofy color on it And yeah, so this one, no, it actually looks like a different piece of wood. I don't know, it looks like, um, kind of looks like hickory, doesn't it? So I couldn't use like a hardwood and a softwood though, I, I couldn't imagine that. But, you know, who knows, who knows what they use. And I'm not an expert on knowing what wood is, is which, you know. Um, but, so let me do that on this one piece and see what it looks like.
So yesterday I stripped the headboard and footboard. Um, I had done parts of it before and I still have to do some hand sanding right here. I kind of left it at this point. So um, I have this one small section to do with 120 grit. And then it looks like, so there's a lot of, some of these things probably won't come out. Um, and then there are a few cracks. So here's a crack. I'm going to try to, I'm going to put a little bit of putty in there. Yeah. And I think that's going to work just fine. And I think there are other places. Oh, so when you look at um, this detail, you can see all the fine cracks. And I think a putty, it, that crack isn't even wide enough for me to get sawdust into, not really. Um, so rather than take the chance of staining it with the glue, glue and sawdust, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, putty and I'll make it extra soft. And uh, this is probably just a geographical crack right here where the pieces meet. Um, so those will stay, but the rest of these little fine lines, I'm going to try to fill those in. And, you know, anything else that I see in the veneer, the headboard is done and as well. this has even more deep scratches. So I'm going to do the same with the headboard. And I'm going to use some quick wood to fill this hole. And any kind of deep groove like that. So the inside of the footboard is also a veneer. 
and it's drying. It has mineral spirits on it. I sanded it down and yeah, isn't that pretty? It has some frayed edges down there, but that's okay. It's the inside of the bed and it's gonna be covered and basically, yeah, I'm not gonna put a putty on it or anything like that and ruin it, so. So this is an old repair that somebody did and yesterday I went over it with a little bit of a knife and dug it out as much as I could because it was filling in the entire space right there. So in order to make it look a little more natural, um, yeah. So, I mean, I could cut this out, but I think it would be really noticeable. Um, you know, I mean, it, I can make it color match, but where it's, that's front and center. I think in order to hide it the best, I will do like a little bit of a wood putty in there. The same with these, um, because you know, they're tiny. If they were on the on the lower leg, like on a bed, I mean, a table skirt or something, it would be different, or a dresser skirt. So you see all these little, all these little dings I'm going to fill with wood putty. It seems like it's more on one side than the other. And then I have a couple of spots where the veneer is lifted. So I'm, what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna to try to iron these down and see if I can't reactivate the glue with my hot iron I'm just going to dampen it a little bit for that veneer. Thank you for watching part one of this video where I'm refinishing and restoring uh, a, a vintage waterfall designed uh, twin bed and it appears to be made out of hickory um, and has some really beautiful uh, veneer patterns in maple and um, I, I didn't want to separate this into two parts, but I really wanted to give the color part of it, um, the complete finish and design part of it, um, its own uh, piece because I think it will deserve it. A lot of this uh, finish was actually, oh, here's some more veneer that needs to be glued down. <laughs> Good thing I found that. Um, a lot of this work was the prep work, the, um, you know, stripping and sanding and hand sanding and, and details with the pick and everything and um, getting down as much as I can and getting back to at least some part of an original shape. I did do some, I tried some ironing on this, which didn't work with the veneer. So I ended up putting a little bit of hide glue underneath. I just squished it until it went underneath and then I put some uh, clamps on it and that seemed to work really well um, This veneer is really fragile um, Probably because of the angle I'm thinking like all those years being curved um, It nicely held its shape. It's really not bad 
um, but you can expect that you would see some uh, giving up of the original uh, glued hold to it. So yeah, I, another thing is I don't believe this is an inlay. It's hard to tell, but it looks like some kind of decorative strip, all in one strip. But still, I've been staying away from it because I don't want to compromise whatever's left of that finish. Uh, but yeah, so next week you'll see I actually have um, two different color stains that I'm going to use on this in a special design. And I'm hoping it will be really beautiful. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And I wish you all good and beautiful things. Take care. Oftentimes, at any time of day or night, I feel like Colin is saying something to me. It usually comes out of the blue. I was coming back from Lowe's this morning, driving down this steep road, and I heard Colin say, turn on your video camera. I said, ooh, I bet there's going to be a bear down here. I drove expecting some kind of animal, hopefully a bear, that I could share with you all. So pretty here. Oh, what's this? Listen to this incredibly silly exchange. Oh, oh, I thought you were my buddy coming. Oh, no. Oh. I'm sorry. Do you hit, just hit a deer? Yeah. Where's your car? Huh? Where's your car? I got it with the gun. Oh, you got it with the gun? Yeah. No kidding. Oh, you dragged it here. Yeah, I come down the hill. Oh, my gosh. Instead of going back up, and it was easier to come down. It's not hunting season yet, though. Yeah, it is. With a gun? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just loader. bow. It's bow and arrow, too. Okay. Yeah, muzzle loader started. Oh, muzzle. It's Saturday. Oh, beautiful. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I thought you were my buddy because he has a cheap, too. <laughs> no. Nice cheap. <laughs> thank you. Okay, well, oh, thank you good for luck. Are you warm enough and everything? Yeah, I'm walking through my jacket off. <laughs> Take thank care. You.